straight away. Are you ready for death? It, it shaked me. My theological inclination pushes me, and I know to trust my heart. I say to myself, when we read the Arabs, say, Are we just saying this because it's written, or do we mean it from our heart? Every year, This is your generosity come to life. Our team in Karbala are busy assembling and delivering iftar packs with your donation. Witness the impact of your support as we reach out to feed the orphans, the vulnerable and the needy with 100 meals this Ramadan. We don't want to stop here. Please continue to contribute in helping to make a world of difference. Support Imam Hussein Charity today. Support the needy in Karbala. www.imamhusseincharity.com In the name of God, the most beneficent, the most merciful. All praise is due to the Lord, Master of all the worlds, and peace and blessings. Be on all his prophets, and especially the final prophet, the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. My respected brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Condolences to each and every one of you on the martyrdom of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give each and every one of you the intercession of the Imam on the Day of Judgment. And that brings me to the topic for tonight. Which, of course, is the topic of intercession, Tawheed or Shirk. Because arguably one of the most contested issues in the history of the religious establishment within Islam is the issue of intercession. If you look within the Sunni school, there is a difference of opinion that clearly emerges in relation to this issue. And one may even argue that even within the Shi'i world, there are different discussions in relation to intercession. What I found always the most interesting thing is that when you ask people in the Muslim world to translate for you the word intercession, they give you different answers. So if I was to ask any of you at home to think of what would be the word that you would use for intercession, some of you would say to me, tawassul. Others would say to me, shafa'ah. And it's very interesting that all these years, many of us have used these terms either separately or synonymously. Sometimes, for example, we may use the word tawassul and shafa'a in the same dua. Sometimes someone might say to you, may you receive the shafa'a of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Someone might turn around and say, no, no, you should ask Allah through the wasila of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So now hold on. What is wasila and what is shafa'ah in English? All we normally hear in English is the word intercession. English does not do justice to the term or the terms in Arabic. In Arabic, also in the Quran, whenever you're reading the verses that mention these words, they're only translated with the word intercession. So if I see the word wasila in the Quran, What's it in English? Intercession. If I see the word shafa'a in the Quran, then what is the word shaf intercession? When I'm seeing this, therefore, someone asked the question, hold on, hold on. I know intercession 
So what's the difference between tawassul and shafa'ah? Because the whole crux of the discussion tonight really is that I can go directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do I need to use an intermediary? That's the crux of the issue. Many times Muslims will say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah is the most forgiving. Allah accepts our tawbah, which we all ask for in these nights and especially tomorrow night, the nights of Qadr. We all ask Allah, but some of us will say, Ya Allah, li. Ya Allah, samihni. Astaghfirullah, Rabbi, wa atubu ilayh. Others may come and say, Ya Allah, bihaqqi Muhammad, bihaqqi Ali, bihaqqi Fatima, bihaqqi Al-Hasan, bihaqqi Al-Hussein. Some will turn around and say, but the Quran, for example, is saying, call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the reply normally comes, I am calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know very well that 100% it is shirk. If a person expects help from a human being independent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one denies that, true? There's no way that you could call upon the help of someone thinking that these are independent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. But then someone asked the question that when we recite supplications, be it supplications that I may just recite tomorrow, Ya Allah bihaq al Hussein alayhi salam, answer my hajat. Is this supplication something that is warranted and accepted or not? Or should I just say, Ya Allah? Ultimately, Allah is the one who answers hajat. We all agree on that. So why don't I just mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly rather than using intercession. Now, as I said, intercession in the Quran has three words in reality. Because what is intercession? When you seek in reality the help of another or you want to go through a particular path, the best path, that will get you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes, if we zoom into the Quran, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use the word wasila. And we all know the word wasila in the Quran. If you look over here, Surah 5, verse 35, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, attaqu Allah wa abtaghu ilayhi al-wasila wa jahidu fi sabeel la'allakum tuflihun. O oh, you who believe, fear God and seek an approach unto him. Ibtaghu ilayhi al-wasila. Ibtaghu ilayhi al-wasila. Ibtaghu means strive to find that which is the best intermediary to reaching and pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hey, which word is used in the Quran? Look, my dear brothers and sisters. You'll see over here the word wasila. Wasila tawassul. Here it's used in the Quran. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, or O oh, you who claim to have belief, be conscious of me and seek, look for the best route to reaching me. That's the word wasila in the Quran. Another word for seeking help in the Quran is the word istighatha, where you seek someone's help directly. If you look in the story of Nabi Musa alayhi salam in the Quran, Surah 28 of the Quran, in Surah Al Qasas, you'll see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses the story of Musa until Moses sees a member of the children of Israel fighting one of the Egyptians. They're having a punch up. Yep, you know the story. You come here and you see in this verse, if we zoom into the ayah, you'll see over here, هذا من شيعته وهذا من عدوه فاستغاثه الذي من شيعته على الذي من عدوه What does the translation here say? One of his own party sought his help. استغاثه So, وسيلة, I'm seeking that which takes me to Allah. استغاثه, I'm seeking that help. Then I have the most famous word maybe in our communities for intercession. What is that? That is the word shafa'ah. I think everyone would agree that shafa'ah is the most famous word when it comes to 
intercession. How many times do you say within the Shia community, Allahumma rzuqna shafa'at al Hussein Oh Allah grant us the shafa'ah of Imam Hussein. Again in the Quran, how many times does Allah use the word shafa'ah? Many times. Surah 2 verse 256 of the Quran. All of you have read of course Ayat al-Kursi. And when you look in Ayat al-Kursi in Surah 2 verse 255 of the Quran, what do you find? Look over here, if we zoom in. All of you have read the ayahs, Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum, la ta'aghdhu sinnatu wa la nawm, lahu ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-ard, man dhal ladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'ithnih. Who is he that can intercede with God but with his permission? Shafa'a, therefore, is what? Shafa'a means intercession. Tawassul means intercession. Istighatha is one of the cruxes of intercession that I seek help directly from an intermediary when I may be facing a difficulty or I want something to be answered. You'll see that this debate is one that was raging in the Sunni world where it begins by talking about A, can I talk to Allah through mentioning a wasila? An intercessor. A. B. Can I mention Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, although he has passed away? C. Can I hope for the intercession, shafa'a, of Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt salam, on the day of judgment? Sometimes we say, Allahumma rzuqna shafa'at al Hussein yawm al wurud, on the day of judgment. Notice how now we're talking about wasila now in this world. Shafa'a wa qiyamah. You know in Salat al-Layl, all of you have prayed Salat al-Layl, namaz al-Shab. The last two ruk'ahs of Salat al-Layl, before you get to Salat al-Witr, what are they called? Before Witr. They are called Salat al-Shaf'a. Salat al-Layl, 11 ruk'ahs. Ruk'ahs 9 and 10 are known as what? Salat al-Shaf. The last ruk'ah is known as Salat al-Witr. Correct? Why is those two called Shaf? There are two ruk'ahs. One ruk'ah helps the other complete. Shafa'ah. The idea that one will help you reach your target. Shaf. Shafa'ah. A partnering that will help reach the target. In the Sunni world, there was a major debate. Can you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? Can you say, Ya Allah, I ask you bihaq, for example, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. I ask you bihaq al nabi I ask you bihaq al rasul You'll notice if this question is asked to Sunni ulama, they will admit there's a difference of opinion and then each one will give his opinion. I'd like us to play the first clip of the renowned, respected Sheikh Hamza Yusuf when he is asked this question concerning tawassul and what the Sunni opinion is on it. Let's play this clip, please, the first clip. Have we played the first clip? If we could play the first clip. I mean, generally, our opinion, I mean, when I say our, I'm not putting myself with the ulama, trust me. I mean, our opinion, our opinion for people of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah and the dominant configuration of that, uh, because there are people, there are minority opinions within the Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah, but the dominant opinion, the opinion that I was taught, the opinion of my teachers, is that, um, you know, tawassal is permitted, uh, to ask the Prophet ﷺ for intercession is permitted, things like that. That's, that's what I was taught, and that's, that's what I believe, and that's, that's um, I think that is the strongest opinion. 
توسل بجاهي فإن جاهي عند الله عظيم it's a weak hadith but it's related I mean it's, it's not fabricated hadith and the, and the hadith of Uthman ibn Hunayf is the strongest one because that's a sahih hadith without any debate and Ibn Taymiyyah's interpretation of it is goes against all the other ulama so with all due respect to Ibn Taymiyyah the ulama just rejected that rejection of that hadith so the hadith of Uthman ibn Hunayf is, is a, a sound hadith and he, the Prophet taught him how to make the dua tashri'an he could have made the, the shafa'a right there because he asked him to intercede for me. But he told him, go do wudu. When you finish your wudu, pray the rakats and then pray this prayer. Allahumma inni as'aruka bi nabiyika Muhammad. I ask you through your prophet Muhammad. And then he said, say, ya Muhammad. I mean, he said to say that in his dua, ya Muhammad. Inni atashafa'u ilayka. Abika ira Rabbi, I'm asking your shafa'a, your intercession to my Lord. Allahumma shafa'u fiya wa shafa'ni fi nafsi. Oh Allah, make him my intercessor with you and make me an intercessor also. In other words, make me worthy of interceding for others. And that, that dua is sound dua. It's, it's pretty clear. A couple of key points emerge. The first one is that Sheikh Hamza Yusuf makes it clear to us that we should never generalize on all Sunnis when it comes to understanding of certain issues. Sometimes people will say that we Shia believe in Tawassul, but other Muslims do not believe in Tawassul. No, on the contrary. Here is a Sheikh who knows the Maliki Fiqh inside out, and he has come forward and said that Tawassul Jaiz, Shafa'a believed in. And he quoted a particular incident that I'm going to come to very shortly where he proves this. But the second point which I'd like to discuss that emerges from what he's just said is that he mentions how the only problematic person who always emerges in these things is Ibn Taymiyyah. Notice in the Sunni world throughout our discussions, whatever discussion, debate, dialogue you want to have with the Sunni world, not one thing. That their ulama are not in agreement on many concepts. So whatever argument you give, he could pick an alim to suit him to oppose that particular argument on that moment. And then pick another one for another issue. Whatever. If Ibn Taymiyyah is useful for a particular issue, he'll be used. If he goes against that particular madhab, then they'll reject. But Ibn Taymiyyah became the scourge on these issues. That even Sheikh Hamza Yusuf says... With all due respect to Ibn Taymiyyah, I'm sorry, but we will do tawassul. And we will believe in shafa'ah. And we'll accept both of them. Notice, therefore, that when someone says, you Shia are the ones who call out, before you jump to conclusions, you'll see that Sheikh Hamza Yusuf has quoted a hadith for him to reach his conclusion. When people say, you Shia use Ahlul Bayt and raise them too high in tawassul. And Sheikh Hamza Yusuf knew very well that the scourge on this topic for him as a Sunni would always be Ibn Taymiyyah and the followers of Ibn Taymiyyah. If we play clip number two, you'll see in clip number two before we open up all the evidences that you could have somebody who's Sunni, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah as well, gives the complete opposite opinion, although from the same madhab on this issue. Please play clip number Two. We have Aisha Khan. She's asking, is it permissible to say while making dua that Ya Allah accept our dua by giving wasta of Rasul uh, wasila, wasi wasila of the Prophet. Yeah, is it permissible, Sheikh? Okay. This is an issue that some scholars said that this is shirk, and some scholars said that this is okay, and the most authentic opinion that it is in between. So Shaykh al-Islam bin Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on his soul, said that asking Allah by any of his creation is an innovation. So when you say, Ya Allah, due to the right of Muhammad upon you, forgive my sins or pay off my debts. He says this is an innovation because no one has any right on Allah Azza wa Jal. But it is not shirk. 
because we know that the status of the Prophet is very high. It's an innovation. It's a bid'ah to say such a thing. Wallah, I don't know what in between means. I must admit. So is it okay or is it not okay? I wish we could live in a world of in between. Was Imam Ali السلام, chosen by Rasulullah and announced? It's in between. Imagine if I replied something is in between. What does in between mean, Sheikh Asim? But that was proof to show you that just because a whole sect of Islam calls itself Sunni does not mean they agree on all creedal issues. Does not mean all the aqaid issues, nor all the historical issues, nor all theological issues. And the best trap to entrap someone is that whenever you're going to give an argument, he'll pick Ibn Hazm for this, Dhahabi for this, Ibn Hajar for this, Fakhr Razi for this, Al Hakim al Nisapuri for this, Bukhari for this, he'll pick Abu Hassan al Ash'ari for this, he'll then come to you later on with others and he'll say, Look, this is this one's opinion, this is this one's opinion. You can pick and choose because if someone can say in between, my Lord Almighty, that means that I could just throw at you anything that I feel like today. For us, therefore, when we look at the issue of wasila, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are in agreement with what Sheikh Hamza Yusuf has said. Sheikh Hamza Yusuf very boldly and plainly said this. And because of this, you know, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf got a lot of stick. You Sufis are this and you heretic and you kafir. So don't just think that when the Salafi wants to jump at you, it's not just at Shia. Even his fellow Sunni who doesn't agree with his worldview, he's ready to jump at him both physically and literally in certain cases. So what happens, therefore, is that when we look at this issue, number one, of course, the highest wasila are the mentioning, for example, of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you read a dua, you ask through the names of Allah, all of you join me here, Surah 7, verse 180, if we can zoom in, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, all of you know this ayah, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs all the beautiful names. So call on him thereby. You call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his names. How many times when you read dua Joshan al-Kabir in the whole holy month of Ramadan, this dua al-Joshan, I call upon Allah through the wasila of his names. That is one form of what? That is one form of wasila. Another form of wasila is when I call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through what? I get closer to Allah through my prayers. A brilliant form of wasila. One of the highest forms of wasila is salah. True. Another form of wasila is what? Fasting. Another form of wasila is what? Hajj. Another form of wasila is what? My deeds that I was so sincere with. That I say, Ya Allah, in the name of that act which I done purely for you. Someone says, where? Join me over here, my dear brothers and sisters. Come with me over here. Look over here. The translation of the meanings of Sahih al-Bukhari. Arabic, English, volume 4, Hadith 2338 to 3848. Translated by Dr. Muhammad Muhsin Khan. Let's see over here. Dar al -Salam. Publishers and distributors, Riyadh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, printed in July 1997. Printing supervised by who? By Abdul Malik Mujahid. Come with me to page 420. Let's see this lengthy hadith about how I and all of you at home can use the wasila of an act that you did sincerely for Allah with no showing off, no riya, no maslaha involved. It was done solely, purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You say, Ya Allah, I ask you in the name of this act. Come with me here. Page 420. 53. Chapter. The Tale of the Cave. 3465. Narrated Ibn Umar, Allah's Messenger said, once three persons from the previous nations were traveling and suddenly it started raining and they took shelter in a cave. The entrance of the cave got closed suddenly by the falling of a huge rock. While they were inside, they said to each other, O oh, you, 
Nothing can save us except the truth. So each of you should ask Allah's help by referring to such a deed as he thinks he did sincerely just for gaining Allah's pleasure. These people could easily just call, Ya Allah, help us. We're trapped in a cave. No, no. Use the wasila of a particular act you've done sincerely for Allah. Come back. So one of them said, Oh Allah, you know that I had a laborer who worked for me. For what? For one farak. And that of rice. But he departed leaving his wages. I sold that farak of rice and with its yield I bought cows for him. Later on when he came to me asking for his wages, I said to him, go to those cows and drive, take them all. He said to me, but you've got to pay me only a farak of rice. What's wrong with you? I said to him, go to those cows and take them for they are the product of that farak. So he drove, took them. Oh Allah, if you consider that I did that for fear of you, then please remove the rock. You know, sometimes someone, you may owe them money and you may have used that money for something else. When that person comes back, one part of you, shaitan, says, just give them back what is owed. Another part is, I invested it. And that's the profit. So I should give them the profit. That person done it out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, I'll give you all of those cows. Look what it says. Oh Allah, if you consider that I did that for fear of you, then please remove the rock. The rock shifted a bit from the mouth of the cave. Subhanallah. The second one said, Oh Allah, you know that I had old parents whom I used to provide with the milk of my sheep every night. One night I was delayed and when I came they had slept while my wife and children were crying with hunger. I used not to let my family drink unless my parents drunk first. So I disliked to wake them up and also disliked that they should sleep without drinking it. I kept on waiting for them to wake till it dawned. Oh Allah, if you consider that I did that for fear of you, then please remove the rock. Imagine that you don't wake up your parents even though you want to do something because you've seen them comfortable in their sleep. That's the highest level of sincerity. Because a person can easily say, listen, I'm looking this for this. I don't care if my parents are asleep. Find it for me. Or, you know what, let the night go and I'll ask them in the morning because they're probably tired. Come back. Oh Allah, if you consider that I did that for fear of you, then please remove the rock. So the rock shifted and they could see the sky through it now. The third one said, oh Allah, you know that I had a cousin, my paternal uncle's daughter, who was most beloved to me and I was sought to seduce her. But she refused unless I paid her 100 dinar. So I collected the amount and bought it to her. And she allowed me to sleep with her. But when I sat between her legs, she said, be afraid of Allah and do not deflower me. But legally, I got up and left the 100 dinar for her. Oh Allah, if you consider that I did that for fear of you, then please remove the rock. Of course, his desires could have overtaken him completely. But he decided that, you know what, I will not force something that is haram. So, oh Allah, so then, if you consider that I didn't, that for fear of you, then please remove the rock. So Allah released them, removed the rock, and they came out of the cave. This hadith, the person has to put a commentary straight away, of course, because sometimes these things shake you, and you don't want everyone saying, Ya Allah, bihaq. So what do you say? This hadith indicates that one can only ask, for, uh, ask Allah for help directly or through his performed good deeds. But to ask Allah through dead or absent prophets, saints, spirits is absolutely forbidden. It's time is a kind of shirk. No, no, relax. We're just sticking on the deeds. You, you don't need to jump. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. You don't worry. We're just going to stick to the deeds for now. We'll come to the rest. You see how quickly the jump? All we're discussing is how good a'mal, sincere a'mal, can help benefit you. Straight away the jump. Yes, but be careful. Okay, relax. It's okay. We'll just, just look at the a'mal first. That's why sometimes I hear people saying, Oh Allah, I ask you in the name of Ghurbat al Hussein alayhi salam, in the loneliness of Imam al Hussein, or Atash al Hussein, the thirst of Imam Hussein. Why don't they ask in the name of Imam? Why the deed? Why the deed? Why the act? Why the situation? Because they know that that moment was the greatest moment of sincerity in that human being. So when you say, As'aluka bihaq, for example, Ghurbat al Hussein, Atash al Hussein, the volume done to Imam al Hussein, because we know that the gravity of that, if you could be nice to your parents and Allah could remove a rock from your path in a cave, 
the new mentioning, the context of an act of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is not enough of a wasila, a deed? So now what do we have? Number one, I ask Allah through the wasila of salah, psalm, the wasila of his names, the wasila of my good deeds as well. Then I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, through which wasila? Then I ask Allah through his greatest prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. How many of us say, Allahumma inni as'aluka wa atawajjahu ilayka bi nabiyyik, nabiyyir rahmah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Ya wajihan, inda Allah, ishfa' lana, inda Allah. Someone says, what wajihan, inda Allah? Why do we say Ya Wajihan? We say Ya Wajihan because of the Quran. Quran tells us that the prophets of Allah are what? Wajihan and Allah. If you look in Surah 3, verse 45, what do we see? We see here in this particular series of verses, you'll see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Jesus alayhi salam. Can I say, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi nabiyyik, an nabi Isa? Yes, of course I can. Ya wajihan, anda Allah. Is he wajih? Look in the Quran. Please look at this verse, Surah 3, verse 45. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qalat al-Malaikatu ya Maryamu inna Allah yubashiruki bi kalimatim min. Smuhu al-Masihu, Isa ibn Maryama, wajihan fi dunya wal-akhira wa min al-muqarrabin. O oh Mary, God gives you the glad tidings of a word from him whose name shall be the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. Illustrious in this world and in the hereafter and shall be of those near to Allah. Wajihan fi dunya wal akhirah Also means muqarrabin. He is from the near ones to Allah. Fi dunya wal akhirah So when I say, Ya wajihan and Allah, Nabi Isa, Allah called him Wajihan. Allah said, his name is Al-Masih, the Messiah. Isa ibn Maryam, Wajihan fi dunya but where else? Wal-Akhira. Nabi Isa is not just illustrious here. If he was just illustrious here, then maybe I can only call out with Tawassul just here. But fi dunya wal akhira. Nabi Isa is wajihan fi dunya wal akhira. So then, if Nabi Isa wajihan fi dunya wal akhira, I cannot say about Rasulullah, ya wajihan and Allah. Nabi Isa wajihan, illustrious. Rasulullah is more illustrious than Jesus, of course. Can I say, ya Allah, bi haqqi Muhammad? Allahumma inni as'aluka wa atawajjahu ilayka bi nabiyyika nabiy ar-rahmah Come with me here everybody at home please Sunan Ibn Majah the sixth correct tradition of the prophetic sunnah translated by Muhammad Mahdi Sharif English Arabic text volume 1 Dar al-Kutub al-Ilmiyah Lebanon Beirut published where Lebanon 2008 Come with me here you couldn't get a hadith more blatant, my dear brothers and sisters, about asking through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam than this one. Come with me here, page. Everyone can see at home. Page 273, or should I say page 548, section 273, the book of prayer establishment. Come to hadith 1385. It is narrated on the authority of Uthman bin Hunayf, the one that Sheikh Hamza Yusuf just quoted. That he said, a blind man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and said, Invoke Allah for me so that he would cure me and restore my sight to me. He says to him, to Rasulullah, you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please, I'm asking you to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that my eyesight is restored back to me. If there's a ma'soom who's next to me, I'll ask that ma'soom direct, true? I'm not feeling well. I say to the ma'soom, you pray to Allah, please, true? Come back, please. Invoke Allah for me so that he would cure me and restore my eyesight to me. He said, if you so like, 
I would defer, and this is much better for you. And if you so like, I would invoke him for you. He said, no, invoke him for me. The Messenger of Allah ordered him to perform ablution perfectly, offer a two rak'ah prayer and supplicate to Allah with the following supplication. O oh Allah, I ask you and turn to you with the help of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa O Muhammad, I turn with the help of you to my Lord in this need of mine to be fulfilled. O oh Allah, give him, the Prophet, the permission to intercede for me. Abu Ishaq said this narration is authentic. Look at the Arabic. If this was, if this book was Al-Kafi or Wasail al-Shia or Bihar al-Anwar, people say Shia, typical. They say, Ya Allah, Bihaqi Muhammad. This is the Sunan of Ibn Majah, one of the six Sahih works. Come back here, please. فَأَمَرَهُ أَن يَتَوَضَّأَ فَيُحْسِنَ وُضُوءَهُ وَيُصَلِّيَ رَكْعَتَيْنِ وَيَدْعُ بِهَذَا الدُّعَاءِ اللهم إني أسألك وأتوجه إليك بمحمد النبي الرحمة اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد يا محمد إني قد توجهت بك إلى ربي في حاجتي هذه لتقضى اللهم فشفعه في قال أبو إسحاق هذا حديث صحيح How clear do we want something? Even though the person himself says, Ya Rasulullah, you read the dua. He's like, no, no, no. Listen to how to do it. I can ask you to ask Allah through his names. No problem. Through your salah. No problem. Through your fasting. No problem. Through your a'mal. No problem. But also through mentioning me. Mention me. When you ask Allah in your hajat tomorrow night, the night of power, Wherever you may be, Ya Allah, bihaqi Muhammad, come back, come back. Allahumma inni as'aluka wa atawajjahu ilayka. Tawajjuh. Ha. Su'al to Allah, because only Allah answers all of our supplications. Tawajjuh, the direction. The intermediary is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala. Allahumma inni as'aluka wa atawajjahu ilayka bi Muhammadin nabiyyir rahmah. Ya Muhammad, wallah, if someone said, Ya Ali, Ya Hassan, Ya Hussein, Ya Baqir, Ya Sajjad, Ya Kadhum, all day and all night, people would jump and say, hey, Ya Muhammad, inni qad tawajjahtu bika ila rabbi fi hajati. I have a hajah. And when someone has any hajah or need, you can say, Ya Allah, just answer my dua. True? Simple. ادعوني استجب لكم. Call upon me, I will answer you. وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيبه. دعوة الداعي إذا دعاني. But here it says, يا محمد إني قد توجهت بك إلى ربي في حاجتي. هذه لتقضى. اللهم فشفعه فيها. Tomorrow when you ask, you ask all your hajat. And that's why I say, but tomorrow night is a night to remember the Imam of our time. Someone says, and how would we do it? Ask Imam al-Mahdi for your hajat. Ask Imam al-Mahdi to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer your hajat. Ask Imam al-Mahdi to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hissa, you believe Imam is alive, you don't, that's up to you. Those who don't believe he's alive is up to you. So I'm not here, I'm talking to our own Shia here. If you look in Sahih al-Bukhari over here, Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 2, Ahadith 876 to 1772, translated by Dr. Muhammad Muhsin Khan, come here, printed in July 1997, printing supervised by who? By Abdul Malik Mujahid. Come over here, my dear brothers and sisters. There's one hadith I wanted you to all look at. Someone says, why do you need to ask Imam al-Mahdi? Just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala direct. Umar ibn al-Khattab would ask Abbas, uncle of Rasulullah, to do a dua 
On which issue? On an issue when, for example, for rain. Imagine there's no rain coming to town. Omar could easily say, Ya Allah, rain. Ya Allah, give us rain. Come to this chapter. Kitab al istisqa page 84, Sahih al-Bukhari. Chapter, request of the people to take the imam to offer the istisqa. Request of the people to the imam to offer the istisqa prayer and invoke Allah for rain during drought. Let's see, Umar ibn al-Khattab, the second khalifa, whether he asks someone to do dua or Umar asks Allah direct. Come with me over here and you will see hadith 1010 narrated Anas. Whenever drought threatened them, Umar ibn al-Khattab used to ask al-Abbas bin Abd al-Muttalib to invoke Allah for rain. He used to say, oh Allah, we used to ask our prophet to invoke you for rain. And you would bless us with rain. And now we ask his uncle to invoke you for rain. Oh Allah, bless us with rain and so it would rain. Umar ibn al-Khattab would ask Abbas because he's the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you have a problem with me when I mention the great grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and ask him to pray to Allah to answer my hajat. Allah answers our hajat. And no one can answer our hajat independent of permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you could forget about. Umar ibn al-Khattab could easily raise his hands in dua, Ya Allah, give us rain. Why does Umar, he says, because of what? Because he is the uncle of Rasulullah. Therefore, when we are talking to Al-Muhammad, why do you call us mushriks? Someone said, also because Umar asked Abbas, Abbas alive. Now, of course, for us, Shia Imam al-Mahdi is alive, of course. If you're Sunni, you believe in Imam al-Mahdi. But, for example, you believe that Imam al-Mahdi is yet to uh, come. And, I, and that's an appreciation of different opinions. Some people will say, but Rasulullah has died now. And so forget about it. Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, forget about mentioning now, you know, ask Rasulullah to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah has died and so on and so forth. And you'll see that this is also a major qualm. If we could play clip number three, you'll see that obviously this becomes a major contentious issue and it's elaborated upon and discussed in this particular clip. Please play clip number three. Now asking the wasila from the Prophet ﷺ is completely prohibited. And it can reach to the level of shirk and associating others with Allah. Because you cannot ask anything from the Prophet the Prophet is dead. And whoever says that he's not dead, he is insane. Allah in the Quran says, You are going to die, and this is your dead, and they are as well going to die. And when he passed away, وسلم, the companions washed him, they offered funeral prayer, and they buried him. So if he's not dead, then what was this play all about? Again, seeking the wasila for our Prophet ﷺ, this is highly recommended and we do this all the time. But seeking the wasila from him or asking him to intercede for us or requesting him to do things for us, this is completely prohibited. And shaitan, the devil, Satan, has succeeded in fooling the majority of Muslims through this, through exaggerating their love until they go out of the loop of Islam, whether it's for the Prophet or for the, uh, uh, his family, for Al al-Bayt, or for saints, or for scholars, or for whatever. Such, such exaggeration is completely prohibited. And I know for a fact that a lot of the, those so-called scholars who pretend to love the Prophet ﷺ and who manage to fool the normal people, the laymen, and claiming that they love the Prophet ﷺ and we have to kiss this piece of cloth or take this hair and glorify it 
and whenever we hear the Prophet we, uh, name, we have to rub our eyes with our thumbs and we have to put our hand innovations after innovation. Now, at the end of the day, that's his opinion and that's the conclusions that he's reached. And we must make clear that, look, in every school of Islam, there are also people who may practice things that require reminders. There's no doubt. You can't hide the fact that you may see someone do something where they're claiming that they're doing an act of ibadah and it could be something that is far away from practice. So that happens. But I think the general equation that Rasulullah, like anyone else, is just dead and he's useless. I think we all know very well that we move on to a higher realm within this world known as the world of Barzakh. And, of course, in Barzakh, there are people who are alive and receiving rizq. And I don't think it's just limited to alive and rizq. People would obviously normally bring out the ayah of don't count those who are dead, uh, those who've died in the way of Allah as being dead. I'm not sure if that's the best ayah to bring. At the end of the day, lots of people died as shuhada. And we know that the shaheed has a lofty position and so on. I think more importantly is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa remains a witness over his community. And I think that's vital. If you look, here, Surah 16, verse 89. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It's a fundamental verse. وَيَوْمَ نَبْعَثُ فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ on the day when we will raise up in every people from amongst themselves a witness upon them. And we will bring you, O Muhammad, as a witness upon all of these. For us, therefore, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, it's not a matter only that in Barzakh he is still alive, he is still receiving rizq, but he is a witness over all of the us, his ummah, on the day of judgment. We believe by extension that this continues with the imams in relation to their own communities and the imam of our time. But for us, therefore, to just simply say Muhammad is dead, when it comes to the issue of wasila, first and foremost, on the issue of wasila, it's not a matter of alive and dead. I'm just saying, Ya Allah, bihaq. The right of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the position of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like Uthman bin Hunayf, was taught in terms of how to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for us as Shia, Rasulullah is above just being a body that just died. But rather, Rasulullah becomes a witness over the community. We as a community, Rasulullah, Allah gives him the privilege of witnessing our actions, for goodness sake, our marhumin who've died. Can our deceased ones come back and visit us? Yes, they can. The more taqwa they have, the more days they can come and visit us. Doesn't mean I can see them, but they can see us. And the more mu'min they are, the more mu'min they are, they will only see our good deeds at home. If a normal person can come back and see his family, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in his lofty position cannot come back and see him. His ummah is not around to see his ummah. Put aside shaheed, alim, so on and so forth. And that's why therefore for us, when we look at tawassul, I say, Ya Allah, bihaqi Muhammad. If I look at istighatha, I have the imam of my time. And I say, oh imam, I ask you directly to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I invoke you to pray for me from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he answers my hajat. Then shafa'ah, shafa'ah I would say is an area many Muslims generally agree on. On the day of judgment, we all look for the intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Now naturally on that day, naturally on that day, Allah is so merciful, Allah is so merciful, that of course on that day I will be calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then I will also call out the Prophet and the family of the Prophet that they intercede for me. Is this mentioned? Of course, it's mentioned, my dear brothers and sisters. Come over here. That first, there's a very interesting hadith over here in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 9 of Sahih al-Bukhari, a hadith 6561 to 7563. If you come to this particular hadith, you'll see how shafa'a is made very clear. In 7501, you'll see the hadith 7510. Quite a long hadith and we don't necessarily agree with everything in it, but it's very important. Where here it says, 
In Hadith 7510, the book of Tawheed, what does it say? It says that the renowned narrators who are in this chain had come to ask a question. Of them was, of course, Thabit al-Bunani. So that he might ask him about the hadith of intercession on our behalf. Behold, Anas was in his place and our arrival coincided with his duha salah. So the question is what? The question here, whether habna ma'ana bithabitin al-Bunani ilayhi yas'aluhu lana an hadith al-shafa'ah. The hadith of shafa'ah. We asked permission to enter and he admitted us while he was sitting on his bed. We said to Thabit, do not ask him about anything else first but the hadith of Shafa'a. He said, oh Abu Hamza, these are your brethren from Basra coming to ask you about the hadith of Shafa'a. Anas then said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, on the day of resurrection, the people will surge like waves on one another and then they will come to Adam and say, please intercede for us with your Lord. He will say, I'm not fit for that, but you'd better go to Ibrahim as he is the Khalil of Allah. They will go to Ibrahim and he will say, I am not fit for that, but you'd better go to Musa as he is the one to whom Allah spoke directly. So they will go to Musa and he will say, I am not fit for that, but you'd better go to Isa as he is a soul created by Allah and his word. They will go to Isa alayhi and he will say, I am not fit for that, but you'd better go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa They would come to me and I would say, I am for that. Ana laha. Then I will ask for my Lord's permission and it will be given and then he will reveal me to praise him with such praises as I do not know now. So I will praise him with those praises and I will fall down prostrate before him. Interesting here. That the hadith says Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa can give us shafa on the day of judgment. But Adam says go to Ibrahim. Ibrahim goes to Musa. Musa goes to Isa. And one variation of this is because Adam's a sinner and committed a sin. And Abraham committed a sin. And Moses committed a sin. And Jesus committed a sin. Because they say that, for example, Adam committed a sin in that heavenly abode. Or Abraham questioned Allah. Is the moon God? Is the sun God? You know all those questions. Moses killed someone. For us, we believe the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all ma'sumeen. You could get the shafa'ah of Adam until the khatam. Know that Muslims all agree that those who have memorized the Quran or those who are scholars or those who are martyrs can do shafa'ah. And you'll notice that therefore Muhammad and Al-Muhammad fit into all of those. There are ulama who can intercede. Is there greater ulama than Muhammad and Al-Muhammad? There are shuhada. Is there greater shuhada than Ahlul Bayt? There are those who memorize the Quran. Is there greater than those alongside the Quran? Therefore, on the first level, you'll see that the shafa'a is mentioned. Secondly, it's also mentioned here the intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jami' al Tirmidhi, zoom in here, compiled by Imam Hafiz Abu Isa Muhammad bin Isa al Tirmidhi. If you look over here, my dear brothers and sisters, you'll see. Volume 5, I want us to go to page 442 of Jami' al-Tirmidhi. Many of you would have come across this hadith, I'm sure. But the hadith mentions clearly about shafa'ah. Notice here, page 442, all of you could see. Hadith 3137, Abu Huraira narrated regarding Allah's saying. Which saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Asa yab'athaka rabbuka maqamam mahmuda. It may be that your Lord will raise you to a praise station. That the message of Allah was asked about it. He said what? He said, He is shafa'a. It is shafa'a. Al-maqam al-mahmood is that Rasulullah could do shafa'a for us on the day of judgment. So sometimes when people say, you Shia are the ones who are always asking for shafa'a. You'll notice that even here. Sunan al-Nasai. Sunan al-Nasai. Imam al-Nasai. Ahmed bin Ali bin Shu'aib. Translated by Muhammad Mahdi Sharif, English Arabic text, volume 1. This most interesting of a hadith, my dear brothers and sisters. This one I will use in future nights for a different reason. But let's just stick over here, if you don't mind. 26, practicing tayammum with the clean earth. Hadith 430. It is narrated on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah that he said, the Prophet Allah's blessings 
peace be upon him and his family. I have been given five things which were not given to anyone before me. I have been given victory by terror, by the casting in the hearts of the enemy from a distance as long as a month. The earth has been made pure and a place of prayer for me. Very interesting line. So whenever the time of prayer comes upon anyone of my nation, he should pray wherever he is. I have been given intercession in the hereafter. Rasulullah says that I've been given intercession where in the hereafter. And the muwatta of Malik bin Anas, the Maliki school, all of you could see here, al muwatta of Imam Malik bin Anas, Arabic and English, revised in whole and translated by Aisha Abdul Rahman, Buley, first edition, D1 Press, 1982. Second edition, Medina Press, 89. Third edition, D1 Press, 2014. All of you could see, author Malik bin Anas, translation Aisha Buley. Come with me, please, to page 200. Look at this hadith. If you come here about dua, therefore intercession is part of dua. Yes? 26, Yahya related to me from Malik. From, of course, who? From Abi Zinad. From Al-A'raj, from Abu Huraira. Every prophet is given a dua. And I wish to preserve my supplication as intercession for my community in the next world. For Every prophet is given a dua. What does Rasulullah want his dua to be? That I perform shafa'a for my ummah. Therefore, wasila, we say, Ya Allah, we ask you on these nights through the intermediary that is your beloved prophet of mercy, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The same way Uthman bin Hunayf had asked that you answer all of our hajat. The imam of our time, we ask you directly, please pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer all of our hajat related to all the issues that we face, domestic, personal, public, private, social, everything. All of the viewers, O oh imam, we ask you to ask Allah for your position is loftier. O oh imam, our prophet, peace be upon you and your family, you are a witness over all of us. Allah has given you that honor. We know that you can hear us. We know that you see us. We endeavor to come and visit you and to visit your shrine, inshallah, in Medina. Al-Muhammad, we ask Allah that he provides us with your intercession on the day of judgment. When all the feet will be slipping, we ask that Allah allows us the shafa'a of Muhammad and Al-Muhammad. Through this discussion, we have seen from tawassul to istighatha to shafa'a. One after the other, we maintain our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For he is the one who answers all hajat. Join me tomorrow night, night 23 of the night of Qadr, as we look at the revelation of the Quran and whether the Prophet became suicidal from the mountain in his interaction with Gabriel and whether a Christian had to teach him about whether he was a Prophet. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. This is your generosity come to life. Our team in Karbala are busy assembling and delivering iftar packs with your donation. Witness the impact of your support as we reach out to feed the orphans, the vulnerable and the needy with 100 meals this Ramadan. We don't want to stop here. Please continue to contribute in helping to make a world of difference. Support Imam Hussein Charity today. Support the needy in Karbala.
www.imamhusseincharity.com. Make the upcoming Laylatul Qadr special for you and your family and bind your fate to the blessed shrine of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. On your behalf, a ziyarat can be performed in the holy city of Karbala. If you cannot make it to the holy land of Karbala this Ramadan, our staff can perform a complete ziyarat of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam with all the amal and rituals in the holy shrine on your behalf in appreciation for a sadaqah of 50 US dollars. We will also have your names and the names of your dear ones and marhumins put inside the holy zari alongside your wishes for this special night. This way, you have paid a sadaqah for the well-being of your family and a sadaqah jariah on behalf of your marhumin in the holy city of Karbala. By paying this sadaqah, you will also show the imam of our time your support to the blessed cause of Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. To reserve your ziyara and receive follow up videos and pictures of your names from the holy city and the holy shrine, WhatsApp us on the numbers displayed now on your screen. Straight away. Are you ready for death? It, it shaked me. My theological inclination pushes me, and I know to trust my heart. I say to myself, when we read the Arab, say, Are we just saying this because it's written, or do we mean it from our hearts? Ask, why has no other sign been sent down to him from his Lord? Say, O Prophet, the knowledge of the unseen is with Allah alone. So wait, I too am waiting with you. He awaited in the shadows of chaos, a beacon of light. With faith as his armor and justice as his sword, he leads the righteous. In a world of darkness, he shines as the guiding light of truth. With every step, a new era of justice and righteousness. Join me as we uncover untold truths about the life and legacy of Imam Al Mahdi Al Muntadar exclusively on Imam Hussein TV. The Awaited. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to Morning Barakah Ramadan Special with me, Ali Fadl. Assalamu alaikum, dear viewers. Assalamu alaikum, Abu Amir. And now we head back to the IHTV studios with Yunus with the latest news brought to you by Shia Waves. It's a beautiful start to the day as many around the world celebrate the auspicious birth of Imam al Hassan al Mujtaba alayhi salam across the world on the 15th of Ramadan. And coming up on today's episode of Morning Barakah, we have a special guest, Abbas. The nun is burning. Many Brothers and sisters, this is the situation of the orphans of Arab. She's weeping and crying because she misses her father. And I don't blame her. She's only crying because she just wants a father figure. She needs a father all there for her. And it's your donations which will turn these tears into smiles. Brothers and sisters, take the opportunity to donate and give and contribute. So we ensure that this is going to be the final time for them to cry. We're going to swap these cries with smiles. We're going to swap these tears with tears of happiness and joy because these tears are tears 
of sadness, tears of missing their parents. Let's compensate them by providing for them. It's been five years since her father's passed away and on the days of Eid, her father would bring her any toy she wanted. It breaks my heart that I leave her in tears. But it's so that I can show you what the situation of the orphans of Iraq is. Join Hands with Hope, sponsor an orphan and be their catalyst for a brighter, happier tomorrow. Water is the key to life, yet millions have no access to this basic human necessity. Imam Hussein Charity is building water wells in Pakistan. Help the survival of many who can't have this basic human right. Those who are at risk of disease and even worse, death. Imam Hussein Charity has a six-month guarantee of completion of each water well project. Help transform the lives of the believers who live without water. Donate today. Mornings with Ali starts with a bit of bread, a sip of tea. Ali's life is tough. His dad passed away six months ago and joined his mother. Every day, Ali pushes the heavy trolley. It's his only hope for a simple meal. It's tough, you know? He's pushing hard, but it's like he's invisible. Finally, a few boxes come his way. But the cash, barely enough. He looks at the kebab shop with regret. Unable to afford even a piece of fruit. It's dark and cold. He came home empty-handed again. He pulls out a picture of his dad. Oh, dad, if you were here, I would not suffer these difficulties. Empower change with your impactful donation. Supporting orphans like Ali for a brighter future through Imam Hussein Charity.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على خير الأنبياء والمرسلين وحبيبي إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين distinguished guests brothers and sisters dear viewers at home السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أن عظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم بمصاب the commander of the faithful أمير المؤمنين إمام المتقين وسيد الوصيين علي بن أبي طالب on a night like this he has been buried and the family of the Imam uh, are grieving and they are mourning the loss of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Beside me is Sayyid Muhsin who will also take you through this specific campaign. Salaamu alaykum Sayyid Muhsin. Wa ajurakum insha'Allah. As we mentioned today's show is dedicated to Imam Ali alayhi salam through the Salam Ya Ali campaign. The Salam Ya Ali campaign. A show where you the dear viewers are able to call in and send your salams directly to Amir al-Mu'mineen Imam Ali alayhi salam. In the last call Sayyid Muhsin Abu Talib was here and we had three phone calls. All three of them were different wow. but each one of them had a plea had a cry mm. in terms of wanting to visit Najaf wanting to visit yeah. Imam Ali yeah. and one of the callers said yesterday one of the callers said if I can't come to Amir al-Mu'mineen Imam Ali Salam, I'd like him to come to me Inshallah. and that was wow. his plea that was his Inshallah. cry for Imam Ali Salam to be mm. with him at all times and that's why we're allowing you the opportunity brothers and sisters behind us is the screen you can see the uh, scenes within that, Najaf, Najaf. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where that is exactly I'm I don't think that would be Najaf it wouldn't be th this empty at this time uh, yeah. But we'll find out where it is Very from. Quiet. In any case, you will have footage from the holy city of Najaf, Inshallah. where the millions of uh, Zuwar oh, are wow. visiting at the moment in time. What you can see behind you is Masjid Al Kufa. So I believe this is maybe one of the um, uh, one oh, of the resting wow. places of the companions. Mm. It could be Hani bin Arwa, uh, or it could be what you're looking at now is the place where Imam Ali Salam was struck. This the is mihrab. exactly the mihrab. Mashallah. So call in, wow. brothers and sisters. The numbers yeah, are on your know, screen. Uh, this show, as I get, as, as I mentioned, is dedicated to Imam Ali alayhi salam. But you are watching Imam Hussein Charity's exclusive uh, Salam Ya Ali campaign on Imam Hussein TV. Throughout the show, we have spirituality, we have poetry from myself, and also Sayyid Ali Masoom. You'll be joining us Inshallah. very, very soon. In light of Fantastic. this night, Sayyid Masoom, I want to take some words uh, from Nuri Sardar and recite. A very, very small poem in regards to how we are Ali's children. After he has left, it's as if our father has passed away. And it says, In our eyes it is written, We are all Ali's children. In our eyes it is written, we are all Ali's children And when the body dies For Ali the heart it cries We are all Ali's children Oh Haydar, oh hey, your children And in your name I begin To tell you of death, O oh Karar Whenever death calls our name Just like when to you we came We earn you as our Saviour for you we've lived and we've died Just like in life we relied On you as our guide and helper When death takes us in to see Let the angels on us read That Haydar is our hereafter Whenever we had a wish Or drowned within our anguish We called for our in 
intercessor When into our sins we drown Turns into a golden crown The love for Muhammad's brother Your love crowned our existence Our death seeks your assistance Your love crowned our existence Our death seeks your assistance On you the soul it's relies For Ali the heart it cries We are all Ali's children Inshallah I will get back to this particular poem When the body dies In essence it is we are that We are the children of Imam Ali salam. However it is a plea for when Imam Ali salam comes to us on that day that we need him most and that day is the day we are put into the ground uh, essentially put yes. in the ground when we are all alone and we hear from Abu Hamza Thamali the words mm. in Abu Hamza Thamali uh, when he begins to describe I think it's Imam Zain Abidin when he begins to describe how do I feel when I am placed in that lonely grave you know what and why do I not cry when I see my sins in front of me, I look, to, you know, one time I look towards my right and the other time I look towards my left and I see no one beside me other than my deeds. And that's why we're asking you, dear viewers, to call in, um, call in on this particular show so that you are put directly to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, uh, Imam uh, Ali alayhi salam in the campaign of Salam Ya Ali. In terms of the campaigns that they can donate to because these days are days of charity, indeed, what indeed, can they donate to? Indeed, brothers and sisters, <laughs> over the whole period of Ramadan, Imam Hussein Charity has been providing assistance to the orphans which are in Iraq and you guys can donate 50 pounds to sponsor an orphan. We've been giving uh, iftar baskets all over Iraq and Afghanistan as well, I do believe. Those were for 30 pounds. And finally, water wells in my home country of Pakistan, where, you know, is quite expensive, 1400, we understand. However, the ajr and the thawab and the sadqa jariya that comes with is phenomenal and is everlasting. So you guys can really, really benefit from that. If you guys want more information on the packages that we have, you can visit the website www.imamhussaincharity.com or just scan the QR code there in the corner. That will take you to our app, I believe, and all the information is available also on the app, which is available on Android and also on the, um, iOS. Inshallah. Inshallah. Imam Ali alayhi salam adopted a lifestyle of the poor, yes. didn't he, Said Mustin? So, Indeed. in it, terms of adopting a style of life that is equal to the styles of the poor and the weak among his subjects, what we know from the campaigns that we have, we try to link them as much as we can yes to the Ahlul Bayt So for example, when it comes to the orphan campaign, we know that Amir al-Mu'mineen is the father, father of, of the orphans. orphans. And when it comes to those who are poor that need the iftar packs, for example, yes. we know that Imam Ali salam would dress a certain way, yeah. he would be a certain way, they, he would act a certain way. They said with his dress, he was embarrassed to take his clothes to the tailor for the amount of patches the tailor has sewn on his clothes. Yeah. And like the tailor would be like, why don't you just buy a new one or something? He was embarrassed. He used to um, sew it himself and yeah. so forth. Look, he therefore shared with the poor people the harsh living and in difficult times. And expressing this, Imam Ali says, Shall I be content with being called Amir al Mu'mineen, the leader of the believers, although I do not share with the people the hardships of the world? Yes. Wow. Or shall I be an example for them in the distresses of mm. life? I have not been created to keep myself busy in eating good foods like Watch the tired animal whose only worry wow. is his fodder or you know, that like, loose animal whose activity is just to eat and fill its belly with its feed and forgets the purpose behind it. Shall I be left uncontrolled, he says, to pasture freely or draw the rope of misguidance or roam aimlessly in the paths? of bewilderment. These are the words wow. of Imam Ali powerful. alayhi salam. Very, very so powerful. powerful. I mean, you look at He's it. the leader of the time. In not, he's the leader of the time, but look how he comes to the, the people. It's like, I have a job to do. I have purpose. Mm. I'm not here to dwell with the pleasures of this world. Furthermore, if I am to be, uh, you know, the leader of the Muslim Ummah, there can't be someone to point their finger and say, you've got it easy. You have Baytul Mal, you have this, you have that. 
No, Amir al-Mu'mineen put himself as low and as humbled himself as much as possible so even the poor could relate and he could relate to them. Uh, there's a story where uh, a visitor comes to see Imam Hassan um, and um, he, walks, he walks past an old man who's trying to break bread on his knee mm. and so forth and he says, I'm looking for uh, you know, Hassan ibn Ali, do you know where he is? And he's like, are you looking for the, the son of uh, Ali? He says, yeah, Hassan, he's over there down that road in that house over there. So the visitor goes to see Imam Hassan, they, they catch up, they have a chat and so forth. Uh, Imam Hassan brings him food to eat and so forth, he's a guest. Imam Hassan goes to him and says, I'm going to take leave now if you allow me. Uh, but there's a, a man I saw, I walked past. He's so very he's poor, breaking he's breaking with bread with his knee, it's really tough. Um, can I take some food for him? He looks old, he looks poor. Wow. And he said, where did you see him? And he said, I saw him over there. Mm. What did he look like? He looks like this, looks like this. Yeah, that's my father. Ah, that's my father, Amir al Mu'minin, And he's, he's not, he's, he's not, he's not poor. poor. He chooses to be like this and to be humble. Yeah, yeah. And on that note, brothers and sisters, we are on the path of Amir al Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, on the path of Imam al Hassan, yeah, the path yeah. of Imam al Hassan. We all strive yeah, to that. follow in their footsteps. They are the leading guidance for us, they are the role models for us to live our lives. Mm. If the man who was the leader of the Islamic mm. empire was dressing in such a way that people do not yeah. recognize him as the leader of the empire, breaking bread with his knees, that he wasn't recognized as the leader of the empire, then who are we not to, to part with a few dollars, a few pounds here and there to give in the way of those who are less fortunate than us? Just quickly on Amir al-Mu'mineen. Not, 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 not a lot of people know this, but when people would ask for charity from Amir al-Mu'mineen, or they'll ask for money or loans, Amir al-Mu'mineen sometimes will take a loan to give charity and wow. to give to those in need and pay back when he could. That, you know, this is how, important it is for you guys to give, especially on nights like these where we honor Amir al-Mu'mineen, where we're in our you know, best of clothes on the sajada, on the janamas, and we are supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on these holy nights of Qadr. These are the nights to give and to make a big, big difference. Brothers and sisters, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam has said, when you donate, it will take away bala. When you donate, it will bring wealth and sustenance. When you donate, it will erase and burn away your sins. Brothers and sisters, these are the important nights. These are the nights we lament Ya Ali and we lament our fearless leader. And these are the nights we should be giving. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply your thawab and reward abundantly. On these nights, you might have come across social media where we put out a, uh, an advert essentially when it comes to paying sadaqah. A lot of people mm. during these nights of Qadr, they don't forget to put sadaqah in the name of Amir al Mu'mineen. Yeah, so what we've yeah. done to make things easier for you is we've provided you with a sadaqah app. Mashallah. Now this sadaqah app can automate your donations. Not only that, but on the night of, uh, of the, the, the Layal al-Qadr, we're able to recite a ziyarah on your behalf. Wow. So that you're performing both the ziyarah of Imam al-Hussein mm -hmm. and Imam Ali salam, as well as paying the sadaqah. There is a very, very small uh, break that we're going to go to uh, right now. After the break, inshallah, we'll be joined by Sayyid Ali Ma'asumi, who will uh, deliver some poetry in honor of Amir al muminin Don't go anywhere. Inshallah, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Here in the holy land of Najaf, at the vicinity of the father of the orphans, a wonderful opportunity during the holy month of Ramadan is to give sadaqah and charity to someone that is underprivileged who is also fasting. It's easy that we fast throughout the month, but know at the end of the day, we will have something waiting for us. But to those that are underprivileged, they can't confirm ends meet by the end of the day. Therefore, let's take this opportunity during the holy month of Ramadan to ensure that we donate and give sadaqah to those who are underprivileged and in need in order that we can follow in the footsteps of Imam Amir Mu'minin and Fatima al-Zahra. Let us all manifest in that manner as well by giving to the Masakeen, the Yateen and the Asir this holy month of Ramadan through our charitable sadaqah donations. Of course, the little we can do in compensation for all those who generously support this charitable and philanthropic cause is that we will honor any individual who contributed with a dedicated ziyarah of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Assalamu alaykum, uh, ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. Assalamu ala abil a'imma wa khaleena. Welcome back dear viewers of Imam Hussein Charity. You are watching the Salam Ya Ali campaign. Myself and Sayyid Muhsin are taking you through 
some of the guidance when it comes to you contributing and donating towards the cause of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Imam Ali alayhi salam and the Salam Ya Ali campaign. There are three different campaigns, inshallah, we'll talk about them later because right beside me once again is Sayyid Ali Ma'asum. We enjoyed his poetry yesterday, very heartfelt uh, poetry and recitations. And today, inshallah, we will also be benefiting from his presence. Salam alaikum Sayyidina. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My condolences to Imam of our time, Sahib al Aswa Zaman Ajalullah Ta'ala Faraj al Sharif, the martyrdom of Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam. And also may Allah fulfill the hajats of our brothers and sisters that are watching us through the Imam Hussein TV. Inshallah. Assalamu alayka ya. Amir al Mu'mineen. السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين شكر خدا كدار بناه هيدري عالم از این خوب تر پناه ندارند آن کس که تو را شناخ جان را چه کند فرزند و ایال و خاندان را چه کند دیوانه کنی هر دو جهانش بخشی دیوانه تو هر دو جهان را چه کند مسجد کوفه خموش است بانگ و ویلا به گوش است در نماز و به وقت عبادت مرتزا شید شهید ادالت غریبم آشنایم جز علی نیست انیس نالغایم جز علی نیست اسیرم مستمندم بی نوایم خدا داند نوایم جز علی نیست منات و دعا از من نخواهید مناجات دعایم جز علی نیست دلم تا شهر کوفه پر کشید که من حال و هوایم جز علی نیست شیعه تا زنده است به غیرت علی می نازم ناد علی مظهر العجائب تجد هعونا لك في النوائب كل حم و غم سينجلی بعظمتك يا الله بنبوتك يا محمد بولایتك يا علي يا علي يا علي
صلى على محمد وعلى اللهم صل على محمد Brothers and sisters, you saw there behind the shrine of Amir al Mu'minin in Najaf. Now is the time to phone in and send your salams, send your hajat and your du'as and perform your ziyarah, inshallah, of Amir al Mu'minin. The phone lines are open. You can call 203 515019 and inshallah be direct with the, the leader of um, Amir al Mu'minin and our leader who was martyred then in Kufa. Said Ali, yesterday your poetry was about. Um, after Imam Ali was struck, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, and taking True. him back to the house. Absolutely. So Today, what was it about? So it was in general about Mawla Ali, so the explanation is definitely, it'll take a while, so okay. I'm going to start for the first part. Uh, it says in general, uh, the Sha'ar says, Alhamdulillah, thanks Allah that we are all under the flag of Mawla Ali, alayhi yeah. salatu yeah. wasalam. And there is no safest place, there is no Allah safest Allah. place to be under the flag of uh, Mawla Ali. Mm. Whoever know Mawla Ali, so they won't think about their, uh, let's say, family, their background, their wealth, whether they are poor or whether they are wealth or what is whatsoever. So they will only think about Mawla Ali. Mm. And he is the only one that, inshallah, and hereafter will take our hand. Inshallah. inshallah. And that's another, th uh, uh, to be part of the theme of Imam Ali salam, holding our hands uh, in the time that we need him the most. Mm -hmm. Again, this poetry kind of led into that as well, um, in the sense that when we need him the most is when we are alone in our grave. Yes. Um, and that is the safest place Absolutely. to be under the banner Absolutely. of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Ahsantum Sayyid Ali, many thanks for uh, your, your time. Mm -hmm. Dear viewers, we're going to go to another very, very small break. After that, inshallah, we'll delve into some of the campaigns. We'll do a bit more poetry and we'll hopefully allow you the chance to send your salams to Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam Ali alayhi salam. So inshallah, we'll see you in the next couple of minutes. Um Ahmed left four of her children and she doesn't have the permission to see them. She misses the two younger ones. It's been two years since she last saw them and hearing the children outside reminds her of her children. <laughs> Um, Muhammad is married and she has four children. However, due to her looking after her younger sister, they have separated. As her sister has no one, she's been kicked out of the house by her brothers due to her disability. Um, Muhammad is responsible for her sister Zida, which is 44 years of age, and she has been traumatized when she was young. Until now, we can feel that she's not comfortable. When people visit, she's shaking and she's got difficulties speaking and hearing. It is you to become a brother. It is you to become a sister for her. Your donation will be providing for her. You'll become her brother and her sister to help and ensure that she'll be taking the right medication when she does need to and have the correct foods that she needs to have. Your donations have the power to transform lives. Be that change today and donate now. We want to find out their stories. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh and welcome back to Imam Hussein Charities Ya Ali Salam Ya Ali program. There you just saw Abu Talib there with some of those people that we're trying to help. Imam Hussein Charity has been helping many, many destitute families in Iraq, whether they are widows or orphans. Uh, we've had so many campaigns over the last few years uh, with medicine, giving them new skills to start a career, uh, you know, repairing homes. This year, this Ramadan, we are sponsoring orphans for £50. We are giving iftar food baskets out, which we do every year for £30, and also providing fresh, clean water to villages all over in Pakistan. Brothers and sisters, the packages are there below. You can call in, you can go to the website, www.imamhusaincharity.com or you can just scan the QR code in the corner for the app and that will take you to our, you know, to the place where you can download and to our website and also our app where you can see all the information in regards to the projects that we are doing all over the world. Uh, Mr. Ali Fadil, these last few nights have been very, very distressful and emotional for us Shia, us Shia of Amiru Mu'mineen. These are the nights where, you know, it's not only we commemorate the death, but we commemorate the strike. As mm. soon as it happened, we are there. In between 
uh, you know, we have a majlis to remember Amir al and honor Amir al And then, you know, the final moments that Imam Ali is there. Right now on the screens it is Najaf, Amir al Mu'min is there, his final burial place. What do you think was the scene at the house of Amir al Mu'min yeah. in his final moments? Because, he's, you know, there's say, Imam Hassan. Imam Hussain, Sayyidina Zainab Salaam Alayhi Wa Sallam, yeah. Sayyidina Umar Kulthum, Abu Fadl Abbas, <laughs> mm. their father, and we all have fathers, and we are very, very close with our fathers. Uh, you know, we are a very patriarch uh, community. And now our father is on his deathbed, final moments. Yeah. Look, I mean, a lot of emphasis has been placed on Sayyidina Zainab Alayhi Wa Sallam because she was so well looked after. Mm during the time of her father, during the time of her brothers, yeah. up until the last breath that Imam al Hussein mm. alayhi salam took, yeah, she was under the care mm -hmm. of her, her brothers. And so there is a time even when Imam Ali alayhi salam mm. is in such pain that he is being carried mm. towards the house, even in that moment, mm. he said, no, let, play, me, go. let me go. Let me come down, let me walk as if nothing's happened because yeah. I don't want Sayyidah Zainab to be yeah. affected. Salaam Go a couple of years before that, Imam Ali is at the grave of Fatima Zahra. He's at the grave of Fatima Zahra. Yeah. He goes to sleep. In his dream, it's as if Fatima Zahra yeah. comes to Imam Ali and says, Go back home because Zainab is alone. Allah. That much emphasis is placed upon the emotions of Zainab, the heart of Zainab, the care of Zainab alayhi salam. Sallallahu alayka ya Sayyidi ya Amir al-Mu'mini Sallallahu alayka ya Imam al Muttaqeen Sallallahu alayka ya Sayyidi al-Wasiyin On a night like this O oh Shia, O oh Mualeen of Amir al-Mu'mineen There is darkness, there is sadness, there is loneliness in the land of Najaf. It's as if Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein have placed the last grains of dust on the grave of Amir al Mu'mineen. And it's as if there was a call from below the grave saying, my daughter Zainab, my daughter Zainab, go towards her for she is alone on this night. But Sayyid Muhsin, you ask about the deathbed of Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. His family members surround him, Hassan and Hussein, Umm Kulthum and Zainab and the companions. But from afar, Umm al Baneen alayhi salam, she looks towards Amir al Mu'mineen with tears in, his, tears in her eyes, and the four moons behind her protection. Protecting Umm al Banin, fronted by Abil Fadl al Abbas, who's bowed his head down in respect, grieving and mourning his father Amir al Mu'mineen. Umm al Banin says to Imam Ali, You've given the final will to your sons. You've given the final advice to your daughters. But what about my sons, O oh, Amir al Mu'mineen? It's in this moment that Imam Ali, alayhi salam, with the full attention on Sayyidah Zainab, says, O oh, Zainab, come towards me. O oh, Abbas, my son, come towards me. I've placed the hands of Hassan and Hussein together, for they will lead my ummah after me. But I need someone dedicated to look after my daughter Zainab. 
he gets the hand of Abil Fadl al-Abbas and places the hand of Zayd Zainab in the hands of Abbas and says, now here is your protector. Oh Abbas, you are to protect Zainab even if it costs you your life. Now fast forward to the land of Karbala. Oh Ali, we wish you were there to witness and to see and to hear the cries of Atash. Al-Atash, Al-Atash, from the women and children. Abbas, with fire in his eyes, fire in his heart, can't take that Sayyidah Zainab is thirsty. Crying out for water, he turns to his brother Imam al Hussein, And then what happened, happened. But oh Ali, up until his final moments, he did not want Sayyidah Zainab to see him in this state. Because it's as if he turns towards Najaf and he says, Oh Father, I am sorry, I have tried my best to protect Zainab. But the enemies of Islam have butchered me, have killed me. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon wa sayalamu alladheena zalamu wa iya munqalabin yanqalibun wa laqibatu lilmuttaqeen. Dear brothers and sisters, we ask you once again, in the name of Abil Fadl al-Abbas, in the name of Fatim Zahra, in the name of Sayyidah Zainab, in the name of Imam al-Hasan, Imam al-Husayn, that you call in and it's as if someone has heard the Masa'ib and decided to call in right here, right now. Because we have a caller on the line. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you? Brother, can I get your name and where you're calling from, please? My name is Hadir Kumail and from New York. Haider Kumail from New York, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Look, first and foremost, I'd love to understand why you have made this call. What, what caused you to call in to this particular show, Kumail? Uh, I used to uh, call uh, the Karbala Live Ziyarat. I used to send my salam to Imam and ask uh, to fulfill my du'as and needs. And uh, again, uh, because there isn't uh, another uh, live for Karbala, so I just called from uh, Amir Mamini to uh, send my salam and condolences to Kumail, I want you to close your eyes. And I want you, because on the screen now is the, a bird's eye view of the land of Bain al Haramain. The and sons of Amir al The sons of Amir al Mu'mineen, Imam al, Imam al Hussein, and Abil Fadl al Abbas. I want you to close your eyes and to imagine you are flying yeah. and arriving yeah. to Bain al Haramain, standing right in the middle. You look towards your left, it's Imam al Hussein. You look towards your right, it's Abil Fadl al Abbas. What is the first thing that you would like to say to them? The first thing is just because um, I, 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 I know that I'm going to get. I don't know, I'm, I'm still on the phone, I don't have any other words. Um, it's something that I can't describe. MashaAllah, brother. Brother, what does Amir al-Mu'mineen mean to you? Who is Amir al-Mu'mineen to you, Imam Ali al He, He's everything. I, again, I don't have any words. Like, everything is in a minute word. I, I, know I, you, I don't have any words. I know you've heard a lot about Amir al-Mu'mineen. And I believe that you are one that when you are in trouble, you say Ya Ali and you reach out to Amirul Mu'mineen to help you in your times yes. of difficulties and so forth. Amirul Mu'mineen now is in a time of difficulty. He is leaving his daughters, his sons. He won't be there in Karbala to protect Abu Abdullah Hussain. He won't be there to stop the poison that will be given to Imam Hassan. You now open up your heart and say what you have to say to Amirul Mu'mineen, your leader. Tafadl, Bismillah. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum ya Allah ibn Hamid. Assalamu alaikum ya Amir al-Mawmineen, Ali ibn al-Talib. Assalamu alaikum ya Allah, Sayyid al-Masih. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Do you have any hajat? Is there anything you want to ask that inshallah Amir al-Mawmineen? Yes, I would like to make a dua. I would like to make a dua. 
Kumail, I wanted to say something very quickly, if you can still yes. hear me. Yes. On the day of yes, Ashura, can. Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam yeah, cried out, Hell min Nasrin Yansuruna. Is there anyone out there to help us? Kumail, it's as, if, it's as if that call has transcended time and space to reach you today. And I feel like there is a cry that you want to say and there is something that you want to say to Imam Al Hussein salam and Abil Fadl Abbas in response to his plea. Hal min nasrin yansuruna. Will you be there for them, Kumail? Yes, of course. I, I wouldn't have any second thought. I would just run towards them until I reach them. Sure. I wouldn't have any, no matter what, um, what the difficulties or obstacles comes to my way. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't care about anything. I would just come to my mom because my, my, my mom was lonely. I wouldn't leave my mom. And I would be considered as one of those people if I left my mom in that time. We pray that you are considered one of the helpers of Imam Al Hussein, inshallah. inshallah. We pray inshallah. that your inshallah. name is written amongst those who helped inshallah. and will help inshallah. Imam Al Mahdi, Ajallah Ta'ala, Farajahu Sharif. Inshallah. And inshallah, we, we uh, you know, Imam Hussein Charity will also count on your contribution and your donation towards the cause of Amir Al Mu'mineen, Imam Ali. Kumail, is there inshallah. any final words that you want to say to your Imam before we go? Yes, I was just have. Uh, I'm just making like a person in dua, it's not going to be, um, it's going to be whispered, so I'm just going to talk to him um, for like one, two minutes. No worries. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. 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 Had an opportunity to open up your heart and send your salams to 
Amirul Mu'minin. Inshallah, brothers and sisters. Pull in and pour your heart out to the footage. Just a quick reminder, Sayyid Mohsin, in terms of if you have been affected and you want to donate, it's very, very simple. But let's remind the dear viewers. Very straightforward. We have three campaigns that you guys can donate to. One is for sponsoring an orphan, which is £50. Another is for the iftar food basket, which is £30. And finally, help bring clean, fresh water to villages in Pakistan. Um, you guys can get all the details on the website, www.imamhusaincharity.com or you can scan the QR code uh, in the corner, that will take you to our app. You can download the app and all the information is available there. Yeah, inshallah. And on that note, brothers and sisters, uh, we're not, we're, in the last couple of minutes, inshallah, we still have a show tomorrow uh, and on Wednesday, inshallah. inshallah. So you still have the opportunity to call in and to address your fears and your concerns to Imam Ali alayhi salam uh, through the live link and through the live footage that we have. We're going to take a very small break. After that, we're going to talk about some of the plight of the orphans and link that to Imam Ali as the father of the orphans, inshallah. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you in the next I'm here in literally the middle of nowhere. Uh, four walls and the roof with Um Zainab. This is where Um Zainab lives with her four girls and son. Um Zainab's husband has been in prison for nine months. He went with a friend to purchase or sell a car and it seems like the car was stolen and this is where he's become a victim and put into prison for two years. Out of innocence, Ali says he hasn't seen his father for a long time. And he wishes to see his father tomorrow. Two years. Her husband's not present. She doesn't have enough money to pay the rent. And she will come home not selling enough water, meaning that her children will have lunch but no dinner. They will sleep with empty stomachs. And as a mother, that breaks her heart. Brothers and sisters, let us care. Let us be in touch with them. Let's show our support. Your donations, your contributions will make a change. Let's build a future where everyone has a reason to smile. Donate now. Welcome back, dear viewers of Imam Hussein TV. You are watching Imam Hussein Charities live. Salam Ya Ali campaign coming to you from the city of London. The time is now 10.25 in the few minutes that we have left. That video that mm -hmm. the dear viewers have just seen is Abu Talib speaking to a couple of orphans. You've yeah. also experienced speaking to Indeed. those who are underprivileged and those who are orphans. What, what is it like from your perspective speaking to them? You know, it's amazing talking to these children because we take our parents for granted, honestly, and we take the lives that we have here in the West for granted. Mm. These kids, they just want a childhood. That's yeah. all they want. All they want is a childhood. They want to go to school. They want to play games and get into trouble, get told off by their parents. They just want a normal childhood. Right yeah. now, 10 year olds have to grow up and go earn money to pay because it's just too expensive. You know, the, mm. the, the mother can't work. She's got four, five, six children. Father passed away, accident, went to war. You know, there's so many different situations and so forth. And when you speak to them, they are so happy to see you. They're so mm. happy you take an interest. Honestly, it's like they're being neglected. You know, I mean, I don't have children, but Mr. Fahad, I know you have. Yes or no, maybe the most important and the most valuable thing you can give a child is your attention. Yeah. And that's yeah. what they're craving. These children are craving attention. Yeah, they do, yeah. They're craving an easier life. They're craving toys to go play, to go study. A lot of the kids we spoke to... They're very they're, innocent, man. They they're are just so, so innocent. innocent they are so innocent, but you know what? the way reality has hit them and life has hit them, they've had to grow up really fast. Wow. And you'll be surprised how mature some of these children are. And that's why, dear brothers and sisters, dear viewers at home, you have the chance to make a change today. It is the Knights of Qadr. Yes. They are the Knights of Amir al-Mu'mineen. These are the Knights of Destiny. You can change not only your destiny and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala views you, but also you can be used as a vehicle for Allah's blessing mm -hmm. to be sent down to someone else. Imagine the power that you have right now, brothers and sisters, by just getting involved, even if it's not contributing financially, sharing the message, telling someone else, encouraging someone else to contribute. By all means, it all makes a massive difference, brothers and sisters. The details, once again, are on your screen. 
There's a Sadaqah app to make it very easy for you to be able to download, automate your Sadaqah donations, and it becomes just part and parcel of your daily life, which is recommended according to the Ahlul Bayt to give charity as much as possible. And I'll repeat, Absolutely. the Prophet وسلم, has mentioned on numerous occasions that if you want to be this close to me on the day of judgment, mm. that is two fingers next to each other. If you want to be this close to me, then do not neglect the, the poor orphans. and do not neglect mm. the orphan. Imam Ali salam followed in his footsteps, the Prophet's footsteps, and he then became the father of orphans. Mm. And on a night like this, the orphans are looking around where to go, where are they going to get their next meal? Because 14 centuries ago, Imam Ali salam, the one that looked after these orphans, passed away and he mm. was never to be seen for these orphans. And so on that note, we send our salams to you, the dear viewers. We hope that inshallah you'll be able to join myself and Sayyid Muhsin in the next couple inshallah. of nights. Um, and inshallah you'll be able to join us in the Salam Ya Ali campaign. On that note, inshallah we'll see you tomorrow, same time at 9.30 UK. Wassalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. difficult. I've asked her where mom is. She says mom is here. And where is dad? And she doesn't know where dad is. So she doesn't have any information I about mean, where her I father mean, from, is. From the tragedies of, of, of uh, you know what's happened, sometimes the parents are not ready to tell the child. <laughs> it's really straightforward. Her response is that I have nothing else for me to choose from. There's nothing else for me to pick from. So this is the only thing that I can love and appreciate and have. Nine-year-olds. It's, it's, you wouldn't expect such a mature answer that I have nothing else. I've been put in this situation, I have nothing else to go to and I have to make do. Yes, over here, sometimes you know, it's, it's, the situation is a bit more comfortable than yes. others, but for many, many of the orphans, it is a very, very difficult and hard struggle. And it's, that's why we require your help and your assistance to give these orphans a better future here. Transforming tears into triumphs. Sponsor an orphan and be the hero of their story. Brothers and sisters, this is the situation of the orphans of Iraq. She's weeping and crying because she misses her father. And I don't blame her. She's only crying because she just wants a father figure. She needs a father all there for her. And it's your donations which will turn these tears into smiles. Brothers and sisters, take the opportunity to donate and give and contribute so we ensure that this is going to be the final time for them to cry. We're going to swap these cries 
with smiles. We're going to swap these tears with tears of happiness and joy because these tears are tears of sadness. Tears of missing their parents. Let's compensate them by providing for them. What is the Baba, Habib? What is the Baba? شقد صار ايش ما شايفه ترى بابا شو وقت بابا توفى؟ من جلس بالمدرسه من جلس الصف اول وين ستيب يا صح؟ خامس بابا شنو كان يجيب لك على العيد؟ العاب الى ما عاد يجيب لي اياها It's been five years since her father's passed away and on the days of Eid her father would bring her any toy she wanted. It breaks my heart that I leave her in tears. But it's so that I can show you what the situation of the orphans of Iraq is. Join Hands with Hope, sponsor an orphan and be their catalyst for a brighter, happier tomorrow. لا غسالة لا جيزر كل شيء ما عندي يعدى هذه هاي الرطوبة وهاي الطينة كل شيء ما عندي واليوم طحينة ما عندي اليوم عشا طحين ما عندي شيء هذا الله شهاد هاي ما حروقة نور الكهرباء عندي كهرباء ما أخذت الجواري ما عندي كهرباء ويومي هدت بي راح يقطع هاي غسالة ما عندي جاب لي واحدة تقول غسالة طلعت عاطلة هذا التلفزيون ما لكم عاطل الحمام ما عندهم يغسلون به ما عندي كل شيء انا حايره بيهم والله العظيم شنو تحاسي شنو تودي له رساله؟ شنو تسوي بس تريد يجي For those of you who are watching whatever you can give you know whether it's 50 pound 20 pound 10 pound 5 pound whatever you can give please give to help people like this so that they can improve their life standard they can become more healthy and they can be more motivated to go and you know achieve greater things generosity doesn't need an audience it just needs a heart willing to make a difference in silence donate now Mama Mojude? Baba Mamojun? Baba Matar Fin. It's really heartbreaking and I don't want to ask 